And this is what I try to teach him. Papi, we need to be here. Aquí. Okay. When I when I tried to, to, to explain the way I see that the whole contracting universe work, I had a really hard time because it's so it's such an abstract concept that people had a hard time understanding. So I came up with this chart so that to help me explain it. So what happens in federal contracting, which is now somewhere between 500 billion and 600 billion, I've seen both figures on the, on, on the website, so, so but I, I use 500 billion a year. The United States government is the largest purchaser of goods and services on the entire planet. So these guys can be our best friends if, if we know how to work with them. But 77% of all the contracts are what I call system one. That's where the big boys are. The large, the, you know, the, the large construction companies, the large IT companies, all those guys are up there. And like that slide before with the iceberg, when my Latino community business people look at contracting, all they see is that they can't compete with the big ones. So we don't compete. Well, what happens is the SBA sets aside 23% and what I call system two. Okay, so there's 23% there. If you do government, or if you do business with the federal government, you're also supposed to have that 23%. So the Walmarts, the Kmarts, Hyatt, Hilton, Sheridan, all these big, think Fortune 500. Fortune 500 companies have what they call a supply diversity program. That's that 23% because many of them do business with the, with, with the government. If, if you go down to Walt Disney World or Disneyland, and you go to a hotel there, and you get the government rate, the government rate is a federal contract, which means they gotta have the same 23%. And the same thing happens, it's the first tier and also the second tier. So the subs also gotta have the 23%. So if you're certified, there's opportunity here, there's opportunity here, and there's opportunity here. But we don't see that because we're looking at the top 10% of that iceberg. So system two, these are the different government programs. These are the federal programs. Here in New York State, there's a MBE, Minority Business Enterprise, MBE, WBE, this disadvantaged enterprise, and also, Service disabled vet. That's New York State. In Rochester, Rochester has MBE, WB, and DBE programs. And oh, and, and then here, Erie County has MBE, WBE. And then corporate, these are national, MBE, WB, disabled vet. And the subs. That's 13 different pots of money. That's what we don't see. 13 different pots of money. If, if you're an MBE, you could get money here. One, two, three, four, five. That's five different pots of money. And what's happening in the Latino community in Rochester and Buffalo? We're not applying for any of these. That's the problem. It's not that the, pro the programs aren't there. It's that we don't understand how the system works. On the federal side, 8A, which is like, I'll, I'll talk about, but 8A gets something like 30% like of that 100 billion goes to 8As. The other 70%, you've got the women-owned small business, you've got minority businesses, disabled vets, vet-owned, hub-owned, you've got all these um, set-aside programs, you know, that we're not a part of. That's the New York State, like I said, now I'm going to go ahead and take each of those. But that, that's just kind of an overview. And, and like I said, before when I, when I tried to explain this, it, it's really hard to do without this thing. So that's why I designed this chart. All the certification programs basically work the same. You have an application, you have attachments, and you have a, a certifier. Okay. 
So someone has to certify that you're a Latino business, African American business, Asian, whatever it is, uh, or in some cases you can self-certify. On the federal side, 8A is, is like for me is like the, the king. If you can get that, that's that, that's the one. I'll talk about more about that later. Uh, but these are some of the different categories that the federal government has contracts. Small disadvantaged businesses, women-owned small business, economically disadvantaged, WASB, okay, <laughs> women-owned small business, veteran-owned small business, and service disabled. Uh, this Sam, Sam, like it says there, this is the, the database where the, the, the federal government goes to if they, if they want a supplier. So if, if they want to buy a product, if you want to sell a product to the government, you have to be in Sam. Now, for, it was called CCR forever. You know? And then three years ago, they did this conversion and it became Sam. I, I was part of that conversion process, and I mean, it was, it was lousy. It, it took months to try to figure out what this new system was, and until they kind of what, you know worked out all the kinks. But if you are a for-profit seeking federal contracts, you have to register your business in Sam. If you're a nonprofit and you want you want federal grants, you have to register in Sam. So th this is your your, your second BFF. <laughs> 8A. I love this program. Um, it's a nine-year program. I, I like to think of it as, as, as you, it's a nine-year protected. You are protected in this program for nine years. The first four years are called the developmental uh, phase. And then the next five years are what they call the transitional phase. But I, I love this program. Some, these are some of the, the benefits that SBA provides you if you qualify for 8A. They help mentor you, and I'm gonna run through this quickly because I've got more information on it. They help mentor you. Ya no tiempo, papi. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, hola. Here, my, my Rochester peeps are coming in. <laughs> hey, did you just sign it, please? Please, yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, as long as they're doing this, why don't we just take a moment and just go around and introduce each other? I think 